Hello, and thank you so much for listening to this series on the Fruit of the Spirit, brought to you by MCW Wisdom. Find us at mcwwisdom.com. This is a continuation from several lessons that we have had so far. If you have missed any, go to our YouTube page. Just find the icon at mcwwisdom.com. Get caught up with lessons one through five. And then the previous Fruit of the Spirit that we have already talked about. So we have already talked about love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, which is also kindness. We've talked about faith, and now we are talking about goodness. And where do you find these nine fruit of the Spirit that every Christian should have in his or her life? That is Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That is the Spirit of Christ that is within us. We need to make that clear. Okay, goodness. What does it mean to be good? What do we mean by goodness? We mean someone who has morals, right? Someone who lives righteously. We're talking about of high quality and excellence. We're talking about what is right, proper, and fit. Well-behaved. You're kind. You're friendly. You're honorable. You are genuine, not counterfeit, beneficial, an excellent condition. These are all adjectives for good. Good is the opposite of evil, right? Good is showing kindness and gentleness and all the fruit of the spirit to your fellow man. Goodness is being generous, generosity. Good is the best part of anything. We often say God is good. So that's what we mean by goodness. Goodness is also an action. It is what you do towards people when you do excellent and righteous and kind things toward people. So let's take a look at some Bible scriptures talking about goodness. Let's go to Romans 12 and 9. I'm reading the New Century Version of the Bible. Your love must be real. Hate what is evil and hold on to what is good. You must have genuine love towards people. Love is the first fruit of the Spirit listed. Genuine love comes from God because God is love. It's not what the world thinks of love as, oh, I'm going to love you if you love me. It's not about champagne and roses and dinners and Valentine's Day cards. Love is an action. Love is a willingness for you to do something good and kind towards someone else. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. And with this one, I'm reading the New Living Translation of the Bible or the NLT. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. What good thing can you do towards someone? I know a lot of teachers. It would be good of you if you could buy them some supplies for their classroom. That's an action of goodness. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. And you know what this is? This passage of scripture is the parable of the good Samaritan. I won't read every verse, but you need to go and read this for yourself. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Jesus was among the Pharisees. They were the lawyers, the keepers of the law and of the religious law. They thought they were smarty pants, basically. So Jesus was at a gathering, and this teacher or this Pharisee stood up because he was trying to challenge Jesus in his smarty pants way. And he said, teacher, what must I do to get life forever? When he called Jesus a teacher, it was trying to be funny. Jesus didn't have the education they had. He didn't have the credentials they had. As far as they knew, Jesus was just some man on the street talking. Okay, he was not someone who should be esteemed. So when the the Pharisee called him teacher, he was trying to be funny. So Jesus answered back and said, what is written in the law? What do you read there? Basically, since you love the law and you know the letter of the law, what does the law say about what you must do to get life forever? 
Then the teacher, the man of Pharisee, read this scripture, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. Also love your neighbor as you love yourself. So Jesus said, well, you have your answer then. Do this and you will live. And so the Pharisee, not to be outdone, said, well, who is my neighbor then? (laughs) I'm putting that attitude in there. And so Jesus answered with a parable. There was a man who was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was beaten and attacked and robbed and left for dead. A priest came by and saw him left for dead on the road, and the priest kept walking. A Levite saw him, and the Levite kept walking. Now, the priests and the Levites are religious people. They're supposed to be people of the church. So church people who claim to know God walked right past a man who was in dire straits, who was bloody, beaten, and left for dead. So a Samaritan came down the road, just a regular man. He wasn't a priest. He wasn't a Levite. He wasn't a particularly religious man. He was a Samaritan. He saw the man and he felt sorry for him. He had compassion for him. So he immediately went to help the man. He put olive oil and wine on his wounds. He bandaged the man. He picked the man up, put him on his donkey, took him to an inn and told the innkeeper to take care of this man. He gave him two coins. He gave the innkeeper two coins and said, and if you spend more money than what I've given you, I'll pay you back when I come back through. So Jesus said, now, which of these three men do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the robbers? And so what did the smarty pants Pharisee, the lawyer, have to say? Well, it was the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said, well, there you go. So go and do that then. (laughs) That is what goodness is, right? Taking care of your fellow man being immediately willing to help in any way that you can, especially when you see that someone is hurting. That is what goodness is. All right, thank you so much for listening to this message. If you enjoyed it, then share it with someone else. Find all of the other messages on our YouTube page and our website at mcwwisdom.com. That's www.mcwwisdom.com. Thank you so much and God bless.